Hey folks, I'm Todd here, driving to work. Um, wanted to talkie talkie, I guess, but I don't know what about. Uh, I was going to try to do a topic video or a question, but I couldn't come up with any off the top of my head. Um, huh. I know what I was going to talk about the other day, and that video came out really shitty. I was, I was going to talk about the top three NES games that I thought should have gotten sequels on the NES that did not, and one of them ended up getting a sequel later on, and one of them kind of got rebooted later on, but um, as far as like true sequels, uh, they didn't make them, and two of them were Nintendo franchise titles, and uh, I don't understand it because sequels got made for almost everything. I mean, you had the Castlevania series, the Mega Man series, the Ninja Gaiden series, the um, the Super Mario Brothers, uh, Zelda, you know, I mean, there's more than that. Top Gun got a damn sequel. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Uh, really, the two would be the arcade style, and then the third one would be kind of the sequel to it, because the first one was kind of its own thing. But, um, you know, sequel after sequel after sequel, and yet these three games, in my opinion, that would have been awesome with sequels, never got them. And, uh, not sure why. Um, so anyway, the first one we'll go with is the non-Nintendo franchise, and that would be Rygar. Rygar is one of my favorite NES games. Some people are like, oh, that game sucks. Um, it seems like most people love it, though, I mean, for the most part, or have good memories of it from when they were kids. And uh, Rygar was interesting because it was an adventure game. And you had to collect things. You did have a little bit of a, of a status screen. And you did build your guy up in a way. Uh, like increasing his uh, tone and last. Which added uh, line uh, circles but to the life bar. And uh, made him stronger. And, and made it easier to kill enemies with your weapon. Um, and you collected four or five different items, and it was a little. There was a little bit of puzzle solving to figure out where you had to go at the end. Um, I don't know. I always thought it was awesome, and there were things about it that that um, I thought would have made a great sequel. We had ideas, different ideas for things. I mainly like a um, grap grappling hook where you could swing. From things to things, kind of like uh, Bionic Commando style, and um, we had ideas for like maybe like it, like wings, you know, like legendary wings. Like Rygar would have this these wings where he could fly from, you know, platform to platform. I don't know about the angle of the legendary wings or whether it'd be a, more of a side scroll or thing. Because I was thinking more like gliding, not really flying. That way you could maybe have to use them to jump off certain platforms and glide over to other ones, you know, that kind of deal. Um, yeah, the enemies were kind of so generic in Rygar, it would be easy to come up with a, with a bad guy, um, you know, and stuff for a sequel. And it, it's just weird because Ninja Gaiden got, you know, two and three sequels, and I love Ninja Gaiden, but they were both basically side-scroller beat-em-up or side-scroller type games at the arcade, and then suddenly, you know, they come home, they're adventure games and stuff, but one of them that got two sequels after the original, and one of them got, uh, you know, none. So, anyway, uh, sun's in your face, I don't know what to do about that, sorry. Um, game number two, uh, for Nintendo franchise title that I always really liked, and nobody really ever talked about it much. And that would be um, Kid Icarus. And Kid Icarus was kind of the same way. It had these levels, and sometimes you were in kind of a, a dungeon type of thing where you moved like Zelda style from like solid screen to solid screen. And then there were, um, you know, your, your uh, vertical scrolling levels and your horizontal scrolling levels. And that was kind of, I mean, Rygar didn't have any vertical scrolling levels, really. Um, but, you know, 
the variety of using all those different perspectives added to the games, you know, and stuff, in my opinion. And Kid Icarus, you could buy things and collect things, and actually, if you played through it and beat it enough times, I think, or something, you started getting different endings. There are a couple different endings, I'm pretty sure. I mean, just minor cosmetic things, but, you know, different endings, and, um, I don't know, I just always wanted a, a sequel. I like the, the little things you could get, you know, that um, like shielded him and then we go around him and different things like that. Um, yeah, so I just always thought that game deserved a sequel. And uh, same thing with, um, this, isn't, this isn't one that did not get a sequel, actually it got two sequels, but None of the sequels, in my opinion, played like the original, and it's like they changed it too much, or tried to make it more difficult, or I don't know what their ideas behind it were, but I thought that Wizards and Warriors, by acclaim, never got a true sequel in a sense that it, um, it felt like uh, an extenuation of the first, and that it, it was just as awesome. I mean, Iron Sword, I never got into Iron Sword. I thought it was too hard. I thought the, I even thought the graphics were ugly, you know, compared to the original Wizards and Warriors. And it was just like, I don't know, I just never could get into it. And then was I didn't even know they made a Wizards and Warriors 3 when I was a kid. I saw it at Game Exchange, like later in life, and was like, oh, well, I'll pick this up. But, you know, I mean, it's just, they're all okay. I mean, the first one is awesome. The other two are okay, but, you know, they're not... I, did, I guess I didn't say good sequels. I said sequels, period. So we need to get off that topic. Let's get close to the workplace. Uh, the final one did get a sequel eventually and, and ended up getting a few different uh, sequels over the years. I mean, as far as, like, on uh, different platforms like the handhelds and stuff, but that would be, and you can probably guess, uh, the game Metroid. And Metroid uh, did get a sequel on the Super Nintendo, and it's one of my favorites, if not my favorite, or tied with uh, Link to the Past is my favorite game on the Super Nintendo. But um, I always thought it could have benefited, or, or they could have really made a killing if they would have got another Metroid out on the Nintendo. And now you have all these homebrews and everything, which are pretty awesome. But, I mean, basically, we came up with some ideas where uh, Samus was more part of a bounty hunter group. And that's kind of around the same time when, like, Dragon Warrior went from you had one guy to you had, like, a three-man party, you know, and that kind of deal. So it was, like, three different people we came up with, Samus, and then there were two others. So, like, an old, like, grizzled kind of grandpa veteran kind of bounty hunter and then there was going to be a young you know dashing dude you know kind of deal and um, they all were going to have their own ability it was kind of going to be a mix of a lot of things it was like Super Mario Brothers where they all kind of had a different ability like Peach could float you know and the, Luigi could jump higher but Toad was stronger it was going to be like each person kind of had their own uh perks to take them and you know some, then one of them might have the longest life bar or not take as much damage when they got hit you know and that kind of thing and then um we were going to do it like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle style where you could switch on the status screen between them you know and it would kind of like transporter them in and out of the areas or whatever and we were we had different ideas for guns. Uh, we had an idea for a, a gold type gun item where you would change certain enemies into gold, and the gold you could actually collect and use as currency to buy upgrades for your weapons and stuff, uh, or your uh, suits, a screw attack, things like that. And uh, we were gonna go with. Um, there were like, but we were also going to kind of do it, I mean, it was really a mix, because it was like Legacy of the Wizard, um, 
there were certain like stages basically that you had to take the boy or you had to take the father because he was the only one that could beat the area we were gonna have like you know Ridley would only be able to be beaten by the old grandpa and Craig would only be able to be beaten by the young guy and then Mother Brain would only be able to be beaten by Samus you know that kind of deal but you could play everything up in and in two you know or it was just easier kind of Mega Man style to beat them maybe I don't know we kept changing our minds that's what I'm saying I'm spitballing now thinking about it and I'm like I don't really remember exactly what we decided back in the day but um, yeah, I was just always kind of disappointed, but some of the things that we did have ideas for did come to fruition in Super Metroid, like having the bubble uh, doors on the ground and on the ceiling, and um, I think we had an idea for a super bomb, so yeah, it was pretty cool, so... Anyway, I'm going to sign off. Uh, thanks for coming by. Those are three games on the on a system that I love that I thought should have gotten sequels on that system that didn't. So uh, you can leave messages and uh, say a game that you thought should have got a sequel on one of your favorite systems that never did. So anyway, thanks for coming by, and I'll see you next vid.